Hello, my name is Ian Lindsay. I am a solutions architect with Quest Software. In this video, I am going to run you through a base install of IT security search, installing it onto a machine with a single hard drive. So what we're going to do is we will quickly review all of the permissions and the setup required. We'll look at the difference between installing the tool to your C drive versus to a non-C drive and I will show the different steps that you need to do as a part of this install. You can also review Quest KB 4301123 for the details as well. We will run through the installation, overviewing all of the steps needed, and then we will look at some post-installation steps to do immediately after the install is done. So this is the environment that I am going to install into. We'll start with the domain controller. I need a service account that is going to be used to run some of the services, specifically from our Intrust tool that is creating the warehouse for the record you're going to search. I've created an account here. So if we look at the account, I've just given it a service name and has a password. You could optionally use a group managed service account for this as well. The account itself is just a member of the domain administrator or the domain users group. It does not need any special permissions to operate. So let's go ahead and close that. On the SQL server, you can see here that I've added the service account to the SQL server. And I have specifically put it into the DB creator role on the system. It needs to be in this role so that it can create the database that is going to be used for the configuration store. This permission can be removed after the installation is done. Okay so, okay, so this is the server that I'm going to install IT security search on. I'm already logged in as the service account. And this is the recommended way. This way the service account will own the database when it's created. The service account needs to be a member of the local administrators group. So you can see here I've added the service account to the local administrators. So let's go look at the code. This is the file that you will download. When you download it, go to the properties and make sure it's not blocked. If it's blocked, unblock it and extract the file. And that will give you this set of directories. So we have the individual components that we're going to install, documentation, and some redistributables that will be installed. So let's look at the components. If you're installing to a drive other than the C drive, you will need to manually install this tool first, the indexing tool, which comes from the Intrust package. Install this tool first, specify your other drive that you want it to install to. Then you will come back in and install the rest of the code using the same tool you would use to install directly to the C drive. So this executable here, I will right click and run as administrator. And we'll go ahead and minimize this. You can see it starts up, it's going to do a couple of prereqs that we need first, uh, .NET Framework, Visual C++, SQL Server Clients. We'll install some components from Intrust that are going to create the warehouse store, and then we'll install the final tool. So let's click on the Install button. Okay, so first we're starting with the SQL Native Client. This is needed to talk to the SQL Server. I'll click Next. We'll have to accept the end user license agreement click next we only need the base client you do not need the SDK so go ahead and click next and then we'll go ahead and click install that's finished so we'll go ahead and click finish now the IT security search warehouse components are going to be installed so we'll click next accept the license agreement and click next you can see I can change the location where we're being installed to. We'll click Next. We'll run through some checks to make sure that the machine meets all the requirements. Once it does, we'll click Proceed to install. You can see here we're defaulting to the user that is currently logged in. We want this to be the service account that's going to be running the services. 
if this is a different account, you're going to have to make some fixes along the way. So let's go ahead and give it the password. And click Next. This is a brand new install, so we're creating an organization. If you have the Intrust product from Quest, you want to create an organization specific to your IT security search. You do not join your existing Intrust organization. So we will just give this a nice name. And we set an org password. You will need to remember this password because you will need it in any future upgrades that you need to do. So go ahead and click Next. Now we need to tell it where the SQL Server is and what the database name is going to be. So we'll click on this button here and we'll run through the SQL Connection Wizard. So click Next. My SQL Server is called SQL 19. I'm going to connect with the NT Authentication which is the service account I'm logged in as. Click Next. The default database name defaults to what the Intrust tool uses as well. So I am going to change it to be very specific that this is for IT security search. So I'll give it an, a, a name specific to IT security search. I'll click Next. At this point, it's created the database. So let's go back to the SQL Server. So if we right click and refresh, refresh, you see the new database and let's go back to the user account so this is my service account if we look at the user mappings now you can see the service account is mapped to be the owner of the database if you are logged in with a different user account it will be the user account that you're logged in with that is the owner of the database. And when we get to the part where we're trying to start the services, because the service account doesn't own the database, the services will fail to start and the install will fail. So you could at this point go ahead in and make IT, the ITSS database be owned by the service account. Let's go back to the server and click finish. So we have our SQL Server and our database. We'll click Next. Select the appropriate country for the Software Improvement Program. Click Next. Now we're ready to do an install. So we'll go ahead and click Next and wait for the install. The warehouse is now finished. So we can click the Finish button. And now we will install the APIs that we need. So click Next. We'll accept the agreement, click Next. We could change the directory if we need to, we'll click Next. Again, we'll specify our service account. Click Next. This share will be created for where the repository of information that we're going to query is going to be stored. We'll go and click Next. The default port, I don't recommend changing it, leave it at AD87, and we'll click Install. The APIs are now installed, so we'll click Finish. And now we're ready to set up IT Security Search. We should note that IT Security Search uses its own customized web server. So you do not want to install IT Security Search on a machine that is already running a web server on it. If you do, the existing web server will be disabled and this web server will be installed in its place. So it's best to install onto a dedicated machine that is just going to run IT Security Search. Let's click the Next button. We will accept the license agreement and click Next. Set our install path and click Next. We're going to use port 443 for the web server. Click Install. And we are now finished. We're going to open the web UI so that I can show you the post install steps that you'll need to do. So let's click Finish and Close. The first is you will want to install an appropriate certificate onto this particular website. This is in the documentation so that you're not getting this area that your connection is in private. For now, we will just skip past that. 
When you go to the website, you will log in with the format domain slash user account. So I'm going to log in with a different user. So now you can see that currently we're unauthorized. The only people that are allowed in at this point is the service account. So we'll need to set up the security. There's two pieces that we're going to do. We're going to set up search operators. This is set up inside of the website directly as to the people that can connect to this web server and can issue queries. The other piece is done at the machine level. We are going to need to put in who are the administrators. The administrators are the people that can do all of the setup within the tool and grant permissions, etc. If we look at the local machine, a new group has been added, IT security search administrators. So we're going to, and you can see that the service account is currently a member of it. So anybody that should be a member of the administration of IT security search should be added to this group. I'm going to just add domain admins. You could add either individual users or an appropriate group for who should have access to this machine. So we'll go ahead and say, okay. And now we'll go back into the website. Log in with that same user account again. And now that I'm administrator, you see it lets me in. So we need to set up the security for who can get in here and access the system. So we'll click on the gear and we're going to go over to security. You can add by individual user or by group who can access it. You can specify where within your Active Directory they're allowed to search based off of OUs or force them that they can only run specific queries that you enter in here. So I'm going to add the domain users and allow them to search everything. So we add by domain slash group name or user. To allow to search anything, we use the asterisk or we could type in the specific query. If you want them to be able to do restorations through the Recovery Manager for Active Directory tool from Quest, you can check this box and they will be able to issue restore commands. So let's just apply this. I now have the ability for anybody to be able to go in and do the queries. We'll still need to set up our data sources for what we can query, but that is the base installation that we need to get done. Okay, so the install in my demo environment took roughly 20 minutes. If you'd like additional information, please visit our website. Thank you for watching.